Does the thought of going live on social media fill you with a sense of impending doom? If so, listen up. Going live can boost your engagement, grow your following, get you more leads, and of course, more sales. But while it may sound simple, going live is not always easy. Today, we're joined by live video strategist Janine Cummings, who will be sharing her wisdom and tips to show up on camera with confidence. Now, Janine helps female business owners to master their mindset, to overcome their fear of live video so that they can confidently show up on camera and, most importantly, monetize their live video content. Janine has a combined following of over 50,000 followers on social media. She's a known leader in the live video space, and she's built an international client base since starting her business in 2017. She now teaches coaches, consultants, and entrepreneurs how to strengthen their messaging and marketing. And she does this through one-to-one coaching, her online courses, memberships, and the Boss It Live coaching academy which is a three-month program which sounds incredible above all janine really helps her clients to build a loyal community of followers who convert into paid customers which we all want so welcome janine it is so lovely to have you here with us thank you so much for the introduction it's a pleasure to be here i'm excited to chat with you guys thank you I feel like it's been like a long time coming for you to to come on the podcast and we actually chat together because we've been like dancing around in the comments on TikTok and stuff. <laughs> so I'm really excited to talk to you, Janine. Oh, thank you. I'm excited too. For those listeners that don't know who you are, Janine, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you came to be the the live video expert that we know? Yes, of course. So my journey started back in 2015. I don't know if any of your listeners will remember the app Periscope that is no more, a community-based live streaming platform. So I literally fell in love with the live streaming community. I would go on and I would watch other creators confidently go live, but in a really simplistic way of just talking and sharing their story. So for me, I thought, oh, I love this. I want to try it. But I didn't actually have any kind of subject matter at all, but I wanted to just go on and talk. And so I started just going live, walking to work, because that's when I was still in the corporate rat race. And I would just talk to people, whoever came onto the live stream. And quickly, I built a community and I realized a couple of things that number one, I was really good at live streaming. Like I almost came alive, this confidence within me when I would go live. And I also realized that people were responding well and I was able to build these relationships with these people that were coming into my live streams. So eventually I found my own kind of thing with a women of worth live stream. So L'Oreal were doing a campaign back then for, and I think it's still going, to celebrate women in the community for what they were actually doing. And so I would go live every Wednesday to celebrate a woman who had stood out to me in the community and tag that person. And eventually it grew to a community of 5,000 women live streamers. And yeah, and so for me, I thought, you know what, there is something in this. And in 2017, I said, I'm going to, I'm going to go for it. I want to coach and continue to empower women to share their stories. And I ceremoniously went live on Facebook, said, I quit my job. Everyone keep me accountable. And from that day to this, I have just gone on to encourage and empower and teach women how to use live streaming, showing up and just taking it from the viewpoint of sharing their story, because there are so many powerful stories that need to be told to transform the lives of others. And so that's my job and that's my role. And I hope I'm doing it in a a way that is actually helpful to amazing women out in the world. So that's how I got started, really, in a nutshell. (laughs) Oh my gosh, that's so cool. I love that story. And I can definitely see and feel your passion for this, which is 
amazing and I guess of course I can because we're live right now right yes so it makes sense you're in your element in your in your happy place yeah so for those people who perhaps aren't naturals to going live or they haven't done it before or perhaps you know maybe they have a dabble I guess what I really want to drill into before we get into the kind of how to's is really what do you see as the main benefits of going live so why I mean why bother can't we just like make reels and TikToks and and just do that yeah absolutely you can make reels and TikToks nothing wrong with that but there's something about the real-time experience that you cannot capture in an edited video whether it's long-form video content or short form so the reason why I encourage people to go live is because it allows you the opportunity to connect with your audience in a way that you can't do with pre-recorded recorded video. There is something that happens in the real time experience that it's just it takes that relationship building to the next level. People love to be seen and heard. They're not necessarily going to say, hey, look, I'm here. I want to I want you to talk to me. But when you're actually live and your audience comes into the room and you respond to them and say hello to them as simple as saying their name, asking them something about themselves, it makes that person sit up and pay a bit more attention to what you're actually saying. And we all know that whole set, that saying of, you know, people will forget what you said. They may even forget what you did, but they'll never forget how you made them feel. Live video allows you to create an experience for people that I really want to encourage your listeners and say, you know, if you want to really effectively build relationships going forward and do it in a way that is going to solidify and accelerate the know, love and trust, then definitely go down the route of live streaming. You cannot go wrong because it's all about the relatability. People want to see and speak to people that they can identify with. No better way to do that than live video. So I think I know the answer to the next question I'm about to ask you. I think I know what you're going to say. Okay. (laughs) Go for it. (laughs) Maybe I'm going to give it, I guess, in two parts. Is is going live something you would encourage any business to do? Or is there a type of business or scenario where you don't think going live is appropriate to put into a content mix? I'm going to be honest, I think live video is appropriate for every and any business owner. However, it's you have to think about what you're actually sharing and put it into context. Mm. So, you know, you wouldn't just go live. If you're a, for example, I don't know, I don't know. For example, if you are a, you're dealing with anxiety and depression, so you're helping people, you're, you're a counsellor, you have to have some sensitivity in how you actually approach that topic of course, mm. absolutely. So everything is within context. But again, I think that we have to remember that people are on social media. They may not be speaking, but they're searching. And so take that opportunity to connect with those who wouldn't necessarily have access to the resource that you have, or they may feel that they're actually alone and they can't actually get to what it is that you have. If you're showing up and you're talking to them and meeting them where they are, I think it's it's definitely something that everyone should be actually using but again like I said you approach with caution you put it into context for the audience that you're actually speaking to but definitely create that space to let them know that that you're there for them and that the help is there and available to them so definitely 100%. That was the answer I thought you were going to say. <laughs> <laughs> Good. I explained it well. Yes. <laughs> okay. So live is for everybody. In that case then, maybe hopefully we have in this short amount of time already got some people thinking, oh, okay, well, maybe I could go live. Maybe there's something I could talk about, you know, in the yes. next week or so. What would be then your top tips for kind of getting started and for effectively communicating with that live audience? Because while you're live, if you're, say, doing something like an Instagram live, you can't see the people as such. It's not quite the same as a Zoom Mm. call or like we're doing now where, where we can see each other. So how does one approach that in terms of making sure that they are having that that two way engagement and not just broadcasting? 
Absolutely. So one of the first things that I want to say is it's really important to remember that there is two parts to your audience. There's the live audience and there's the replay audience. So with the exception of platforms like TikTok, you have access to a replay on Instagram, for example. So one of the things I say is always go into the live with the approach that you are speaking, you're always speaking to somebody and focus on that one. So when you go live, don't hesitate don't wait even if the room says zero live still speak as if that room is full because the majority of our audiences will always come back via the replay and we have to manage objections so if we're sitting waiting for people to hop on that number one is a no-no so start with your dynamic introduction start straight away and introduce yourself now I call it a, a power intro. It's a 30 second introduction where I say that you introduce your topic, say who you are, what you do, and the benefit for the audience. You want to make sure that you're demonstrating the what's in it for them early. Once you're able to do that, you're then going to be able to naturally warm up into the live stream. So please just don't focus on that number. Just focus on the one, the message that you have, and it will flow. So the second part that I would say is, is that just stick to three to five topics at a maximum. And when you're getting started, three is enough. Just start with three and something that you can confidently talk about easily. If you were to do a TED talk, you, we've all heard that, haven't we? What could you talk about? You know, if you could you talk on any topic, what would you talk about? Just think about that. And just go with it and make sure that even if there isn't anybody in the audience, still throw out the questions. It will feel a little bit awkward at the beginning, but I promise you it gets easier. And remember that people need time to get to know you. You know, it's, it's a whole dating process. So people, some, a lot of the time will sit back and will watch first before they make a decision as to whether or not they want to follow you or they want to interact. So just have that in your mind as well and just trust the process. It does get easier. So that would be my tips for getting started. It's that lo long time listener, first time caller kind of vibe, right? Yes. With the people yes. watching, 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 but absolutely. not necessarily actively engaging. Oh, I absolutely. love that. And I absolutely love the point that you made about just getting started right away instead of doing the old influencer trick. I'm yes. just going to wait for a few more people to hop on. And sometimes... <laughs> Sometimes I'll say that in a Zoom call with my students and then I'm like, oh, sorry to be a Salican influencer right now. Like, it's kind of, that's kind of a slightly different scenario. But yes, yes. absolutely cater to both of those audiences, yes. those watching live and, of course, the replay. Love mm. that. I love also how you said that it takes time. So yes. many business owners and even, I guess you could say, micro-influencers or people that are trying to be an influence on social media forget that things just take time. Unfortunately, I think that's the internet's fault of giving us instantaneous mm. answers all the time. But yes, when it comes to, I guess what you're saying also is that you need to take the time to plan your lives as well yes. before going live for sure. Yes. So a live, you can go, you know, half an hour, 15 minutes, like yes. you on your, on your walk and stuff to, to work, you were only there for a few minutes, but yes, that's only that small amount of time. What happens after that? Like, is it over? Like you, you, you can't really just use that live or is there, what, what should business owners do next after the live is, is over? What can they do? Absolutely. Well, one of the things I would say as a standard is making sure that you've optimized that piece of content. So whatever platform that you're on, make sure that you've done everything to make sure the titling, the description is on point. If there are people that have joined your live stream and you have access to see those individuals. So for example, use an Instagram, you see the, the total number of people that have actually joined. It doesn't take very long to just click through to those people and just say, hey, thanks, Marie, for joining my live stream today. Really appreciate you being there. If you have any other questions, please let me know. And it just opens up a conversation. And even if there is no response to that, you've actually set, you've set that relationship so they know, okay, Janine has actually reached out to me. This is cool. And they may not, as I said, say anything, but it's there. I think also as well, post promote your live stream. So utilize the other features and tools 
if you've got stories, you know, make sure that you are making it relevant to the actual conversation that you're having in the stories and then say, I've just done a live on this specific topic. Utilize shorts, reels, TikTok, short form video content as well. But also if you've got your email list, let your email list know. So I think that there's, it's about utilizing the, the different tools that are available to us if we're using other things on social media, but definitely letting our list know before and after. So yeah, that's what I would say is a really good thing to do. Make sure that you optimize beforehand, but then also post promote and post optimize as well. Mm, yes, mm. I like that idea because I think, yeah, we do think, I know for myself and going live on Instagram, which I have to say, I've, I personally have been a little bit guilty. I haven't done a live in a while, but I've actually got one plan for Monday that I'm doing with somebody else. So nice. it's kind of perfect timing for the recording of this. But yes, I love that idea. I mean, often I will talk about that I'm going live and then maybe say, yep, I've just done one, but kind of end it there. So I think those are really great tips. And of course, reaching out and starting that conversation on a platform like Instagram, I mean, that's what that platform's all about. So Absolutely. no one's going to feel weird about you reaching out and saying thanks as well. No. I think it's a really nice kind of warm way of getting into somebody's inbox instead of, yes. you know, those creepy cold DMs that we quite often get. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Right. <laughs> you know the ones. So many of our listeners are busy parents in business. So we are always looking for time-saving shortcuts or things that are just going to make our lives easier. Absolutely. So I'd love to get your thoughts on this. Do you think yes. going live is a time saver if we're thinking about sort of content creation as a whole or and or a sanity saver? Okay, so one of the things I want to say is, is that people assume for the most part that live streaming is a, a very stressful thing. And I understand when you're a parent, it's difficult because no two days are the same. So mm. it's about thinking, okay, how can I best optimize my time? We are in a perfect time with so many tools available to help us to be able to go live and not have to worry about, you know, oh, are my kids going to interrupt? Or if you don't have the time on the allotted day that you usually go live because things come up, there are tools that you can use to pre-record your live streams. As well as going live, you can pre-record. So tools like StreamYard, OneStream. Really? Okay. Yes, ladies, stick with me. I've got you covered. Yes. <laughs> so for me, I'll give an example of myself. So when there are times when I'm busy with coaching, meetings, and I don't have time to actually be at my allotted lives. But you'll still see Janine go live because I'm using tools to pre-record my live stream and schedule them out. And then they will go out at the allotted time. One stream is very good for that as well, because I, I used to not have time to go live. There was a period of time on Instagram where I just I couldn't show up, but I still did a live, recorded it, uploaded it and then scheduled it out. So I would say that it doesn't have to be stressful look at the options that are available to you, the tools that will help you to be able to do that if you're not able to go live. I will always advocate that you definitely go live if you can, but sometimes it's not possible. And also multi-streaming. That's something that I would say as well. Again, and I, I, it's something that I am very passionate about because it's twofold, but definitely thinking about how you can go live across platforms so you don't feel like, oh, I have to be on TikTok. And then now, now I have to go on Instagram. Oh gosh, I've got to go onto LinkedIn. No, utilize the tools that are available to you. Optimize your time and yeah, make it work for you essentially is what I'm saying. Mm. Oh, mm. I use StreamYard to go live into my Facebook groups, but hey, I didn't think about using it to pre-schedule a live. And so does it yeah. work that you are then, so you've pre-scheduled your video, out it goes, yeah. looks like you're live. Yes. Are you then live in the comments with people or how, mm. how does that part work? Yeah, okay. I was wondering about that. Because mm. so, there are some tools that do that. Um, yeah. And, you're not going to be live in the, in the comments. So it's one of two things. It's either you can be, if you want to be transparent, say this is a pre-recorded live if you want to, or you can for the most part not, I wouldn't worry too much about that. Like, oh, I need to be live in the comments because most of the time people are catching on the replay 
or they're not actually noticing. So you can go back or it might be a situation whereby you couldn't actually do the live because if you're a busy mom, you're looking after your children, but it doesn't mean that you're not present or available at that time. So your live can still be running and you can still comment as yourself if you are available. It's only if you're you're not able to be at that live because you're doing other things, then you say, okay, right, I'll have to respond to the comments later. But yeah, I would say don't worry too much about that. If you have the time to be there, but you couldn't just be on the screen to do the live, then you can just be present in the comments. And more time than not, people don't notice and they're totally fine with it. So yeah, so it's there's just, just do whatever works best for you, but just don't allow your circumstances or certain things to hold you back. Say, oh, well, I haven't got the best setup or, you know, the children are running around, whatever it might be. Still take the opportunity to go live because, you know, there's so much opportunity now and so many tools to help you. Yeah, amazing. Mm. We will link to StreamYard and OneStream in the show yep. notes as well for it's those listening things. so you can go have a little look and Absolutely. see if one of these is going to be right for you as well. You mentioned multi. Yeah. Is that, I know that a lot of creators do it and you, you yourself do it. Is that something yeah. you would recommend someone who is an absolute newbie to live stream? And what are the pros and cons of doing multi-streaming? Because I mean, it sounds like, yes, it is a time-saving yes. tool, but yes, what are the disadvantages that people have to consider? Okay. So thank you for the question in parts. I'm going to answer it in parts. And if I miss anything, just rein me back in. So the first part, <laughs> if somebody is a newbie to live streaming, should they look at multi-streaming? I would say in the first instance, no. And here's the reason why. Because when it comes to getting started with live stream, I think there is a lot around the mindset that people have to master first in terms of their confidence. And if there are too many moving parts, it can be very overwhelming. And so for me with my clients, I say start where you are. So keep it very simple when you first get started. So you live stream to one platform. You don't necessarily even have to use tools. You can just use your mobile. Get used to actually going live you know, embracing that that number that pops up and talking in real time. That's the first thing that I would say. And as you become more confident, you could then add other layers in. So in terms of multi-streaming, two things that I want to say. I am an advocate for it and I'm not an advocate for it. And, I, and here's the reason why. When I see creators multi-streaming, i.e. they have their mobile and they have their iPad because they want to go live to Instagram and TikTok at Mm. the same time, that's a no-no. And the reason why it's a no-no is because we've always got to consider the experience for the audience. It's about making sure that that one person, even though you're not speaking to one person, but you still want that person to look at you and feel they're connecting with you. When you're multi-streaming to multiple devices, your attention is divided because you cannot have your eyeballs on the TikTok and also on the Instagram. Sorry, sometimes it slips out, but you cannot (laughs) do that. It's, It's not possible. And so I've seen creators, amazing creators, lose audience members because they're they're looking at this screen then they're looking at that screen so absolutely not in terms of multi-streaming using software that allows you to look at one camera and talk to multiple people absolutely 100 because it goes back to what we've already discussed live streaming can be overwhelming it can be if you're a busy mom or you're just a busy person in general you business etc clients life in general you want to make sure that you have the opportunity to be able to optimize and do things as easily and seamlessly as possible. So using that sort tool, a tool, sorry, and going live across different platforms, looking at that one camera, absolutely 100%. Because as I said, we need to save our time and also allows us to then reach audiences at different platforms and bring them all together. So yes, absolutely. So that's the first part of the question. <laughs> I know it's a really long question (laughs) that's okay I want to make sure I get it all in so yes and you said the pros and cons yes okay so the pros of multi-streaming I think I've kind of touched on it is you Mm. get to be able to speak to multiple people across platforms the disadvantage of multi-streaming as I said if you do it on multiple devices is divided attention also divided quality and I think also the disadvantage if you're multi-streaming using software is that there are many different moving parts so if for example you're not that confident yet and you're giving yourself too many things to do it can be overwhelming 
Mm. Also, things go wrong. They can go wrong. And if, for example, your camera gives out or, for example, one of my clients, bless her heart, she was doing a live yesterday and her microphone went and she didn't didn't know. So, for example, if that happens, it's gone across all of your, your platforms. So that's the only disadvantage. But again, the advantages far outweigh any disadvantages that you can can experience. Yes. And stuff going wrong, like I'm sure we've all had this. I had a webinar once and we started talking everything fine and then that's it. It just crashed and it was loading and I couldn't do anything and lost everybody. Mm. It's knowing, and this I guess comes with experience, it's knowing, okay, quick, what's my plan B? Instead of panicking and going, ah, it's all ruined. I might as well just burn it all down, you know. (laughs) (laughs) It's like, okay, quick, what can we do? So in that case, I was using a webinar software and that crashed. So I quickly emailed all the participants and said, come jump on Zoom with me. I'm over here. Here's the link. And look, I lost a lot of people in that process. That's to be expected. But I was able to then present the webinar, have the recording and send it out to the people who perhaps I lost or who were never going to be there live anyway, of course, as you said before. But it's, I think... Yeah, when you're very first starting out, you wouldn't have the confidence to perhaps make those quick decisions and you might yes. end up panicking. So maybe Absolutely. yeah, one platform at a time just to, just to start with. Yes, and know yes, that, yes. I mean, we all know about tech issues. It happens so often. We've all been on Zoom calls and people are muted. Like <laughs> we're, we're all over this now. So I think people <laughs> are much more forgiving of of those situations as I'm, well it's I'm yeah I'm so glad that you have said that because I wanted to follow up and say please don't put unnecessary pressure on yourself because people don't see the things that you necessarily see unless you highlight it. I'll give an example. I was live recently and I had left something in the background and I was talking mid live stream going through my content and then I said, oh no, there's something. And I reached and moved the thing. And one of my regulars said, we didn't even notice Janine. We didn't even, she said it in the comments <laughs> and I know better, but I still, I still did it. So the point I want to make is, is please don't worry about it. I actually posted a TikTok and reel recently, I think it was yesterday, where I gave an example some years back of a BBC presenter who was doing live correspondence and his children came into the room and his wife came in and she slid across the floor. And the point that I'm making is, is that he, even though he was mortified, he still kept it moving. And us as the viewing public, which is we totally empathized. And if anything, we, we gravitated more. It stood out to us more because we can only become better and can only become stronger through the mistakes that we make. And I've made quite a few. So I just want to <laughs> encourage anyone who is listening that feels that I can't show up because I don't have the perfect background. I can't show up because my kiddies are, are with me. Please show up anyway. Because when you show up, somebody else is encouraged to show up as well. And then it's the ripple effect. And we've got to be about change for good. There's so much craziness going on in the world. So we really need to start showing up and encouraging others. So I hope that that has been a message of encouragement for anyone that's listening. Oh, I like that. Mm. One thing that I speak to my students about showing up is it's not about you. It's about your audience and serving your audience. They are following you for a reason. They want the tips and knowledge and stories that you have. So by not showing up, and maybe you're not going live right away, maybe you're easing into it with a few pre-recorded stories, that's fine. But just hiding out and not sharing your voice and not sharing those stories or the knowledge that you have it means you're not helping someone. If there's a mum at home who cannot get her child to sleep and you have yes. incredible tools and suggestions to, to help her do that and you're not sharing that, you, it's a disservice to her. So I think Absolutely. you need to sort of reframe it that way. And when you do that, you're not thinking so much about yourself as that yes. person that you're helping, right? Mm. Yes, Absolutely. Yeah, I feel like with with the the coming of TikTok as well, we have a lot less judgment for for people and how they come out yes. live. Like we are not judging people that are in still in their pajamas when they're doing a TikTok. We're not Absolutely. judging them that their house is a mess, that sort of thing. So it's like it's brought yes. down that stigma that you have to look polished even to go live. No, no. which no. yeah, 
Yeah, I I don't know. I, I love TikTok. And I guess this is going to lead into the quick fire questions because I, I'm dying, <laughs> okay. dying to know. I'm dying <laughs> to know what your thoughts are on something in particular. Okay. Since, since, do you think TikTok is going to get banned in the US? Myself personally, I don't mm. think it's going to be banned in the US. I do think every creator or business owner on the platform needs to have their backup as we've we've talked about and make sure mm-hmm. that the community that you're building that you're not keeping them just housed on TikTok or the content that you have is just housed there so migrate your content elsewhere and make sure that you are building your email list I think if it does get banned like with anything there has to be a phasing out period it won't be just you know blackout <laughs> TikTok is gone so there will still be yeah yeah, there'll still be time to figure some stuff out but I think what this teaches us is that we never put all eggs in one basket and we need to be Mm -hmm. making sure that we're protecting those communities that we're building because again when I'm talking about relationships in live streaming it's it goes across the board you've built the relationship through your video content you've built it through the live stream okay so then how do we carry on the conversation because I still want to talk to you I still want to help you to grow and to stretch so it's really important that we are are building our email lists whilst this is all sorted out so to speak but in answer to your question no (laughs) I think it's gonna be fine I, yeah, I I hope so. I certainly hope so, for sure. Okay. Well, sorry, yeah. I was just going to ask a bit of a side question from that then, Go Janine. Yes. How are you getting people from your live over to your email list? Are you ending each live, you know, with a call to action, with a juicy opt-in or lead question. magnet or something like that. What's, I guess, some of the practical ways that our listeners could then go, okay, I've developed these relationships through my yes. lives, but yes. I know I need to take that next step and get them yes. over onto my own channels. Yes, absolutely. So one of the things I'll say is, is that for me, I've been focused on speaking to them as in respect of building community. And I've been very intentional with saying that, you know, these lives are great and we're having these great conversations, but I want us to be able to build together and continue the conversation. So I have been segueing them to my community and Facebook group. So it's about go moving them to another space. So what I've actually done, because I understand, and we, we all know that especially the way TikTok works, it's constantly driving cold traffic. So it's not necessarily the same people that have seen you. So you do have to have that warming up period and building the relationships with them. But at the same time, taking them to somewhere where it's not automatically, well, buy my stuff. It's incentivizing them. So I incentivize them to join the community where the conversations can continue. And I do make it clear to them that when they actually come to join the community, that they will, there's a requirement for them to give their email. But I still say, this is the reason why. So number one, I can give you a free training. In addition to that, you know, you can, you know, so I think it's about how you actually frame, frame it, but definitely 100% there should be a call to action to drive them to the link in your bio, but also make sure that before, even if it is something paid, that you are demonstrating the value proposition through that live stream so that it's a no brainer for them to say, okay, sure, I will take the next step. And they don't necessarily take the next step straight away, but it's our responsibility to keep reminding them because people need the theory of the seven touches. What is it now? Probably 20 million touches before somebody I, takes action yeah, because they're I so distracted. 30. Listen, yeah. but that but that makes sense because we're, there's so much noise and vying for people's attention. So another thing that I want to say from this is don't be discouraged if you've said once, twice, 10 times, oh, you know, join my community or I have this free offer. People will move eventually and don't feel like you're overkilling. Oh, I've said it already. No, keep saying, keep saying. And remember, it's mindset. I'm giving an opportunity. I'm sharing an opportunity and you will be able to build from there. So just be patient, be consistent, show up, add that value, show that you're actually interested in people as well. I think that's the power position that people miss with live streams because Mm -hmm. of course we're all going live to share and talk on something that we want to talk on. But at the same time, we need to make sure that when we're talking to people, that we're not just talking at those people that we're saying I want to have a conversation with you and a lot of creators go live I I mean I've 
consume a lot of live content and it's just talking or even talking between the two people that are there. No, talk to the audience, pull them in. So that will help with the list building, you know, the purchasing of products and services and building community. Mm, excellent. Oh, I love that. Mm. And that tip, yeah, to remind people, hey, pull them in, ask the questions, even if you're not getting the answers, like you said, people are still listening and they're going to feel more connected with you in that way as well. So beautiful. Thank yes. you for answering that side tangent <laughs> question oh, hey we're all about the practical application right yes okay so another little quick fire question for you what is your guilty pleasure oh, well, well one that's appropriate to share on the podcast oh does it have to be live stream specific or is it could it be no, anything just generally let oh. us get to know you more oh well I've got a bit of a I do like a good chocolate bar gluten-free dairy chocolate I I found this creator on quick plug for her but I'm actually it's my guilty pleasure called Candy Hackers found her on TikTok she makes gluten-free dairy-free chocolate and I absolutely love her story her journey of how she started the actual business and but her chocolate is amazing as well it goes with the actual storytelling you can tell that she pours love into it so I've I've gone through all of her beautiful chocolate popping orange candy fruit and nut oh and the fact that it doesn't have any gluten or dairy oh, chocolate is my thing so yeah so if anyone wants to send me any chocolate <laughs> I'm here for it absolutely but yeah we'll have, we'll have to send you some good Aussie chocolate then yes please but yes so chocolate any form of chocolate I don't mind that makes me a very very happy live video strategist <laughs> Okay, next quick fire question. What's yes. your favorite social media platform and why? Oh, what's my favorite? Okay, I would usually say YouTube, but YouTube's not a social media platform. So of mm. the actual social media platforms, I'm going to say Instagram. And here's the reason why. Because there are is so many opportunities to have conversations, no matter what is your favorite way to create content. And what I also love is that it is still quite seamless in terms of how you can connect all the moving parts. So if you are creating short form video content, you've got your stories, you've got your live streams. So I think that's the platform that I like the most. And I think stories is extremely powerful as well, because that's the first place that people go to by default. Mm -hmm. And if we're talking about the relationship building, then that's the place to do it. You know, you hear it and it sounds quite cliche, take people behind the scenes, but allow people to see another side to you. Because one of the things that I will say is people make a lot of assumptions about myself based on my live videos and how I actually present. But in my stories, you actually get to see that, yes, I might be confident in front of the camera, but this introvert needs time out in nature with trees. Leave me alone. I need to be peaceful. I need to have zen. And again, that's another way to connect. So in answer to your question, I could tell I'm tapering off, is, is Instagram for the connectivity side of things. Yes. Oh, yes. All right. Team Instagram for the win. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. Final little question for us. And this ties back to the possible TikTok ban. Clem and I have just gone and had a little dabble in Clapper, which is oh, wow. a a possible alternative to TikTok if the worst mm -hmm. were to happen. Are you over there yet? And if you are, give us like a little 30 second rundown of what are your thoughts? What are your feelings about this app? Yes, that's interesting that you've asked me. I am on Clapper. I joined about a week ago and I'm fast approaching 10k followers and what? also wow. yes, and I'm also <laughs> verified at level one on the platform I, I so swear it, I it, saw your profile yesterday and it was at like 400 followers oh, wow. <laughs> yeah it's nine point something when I checked last Holy night it was hell. nine point something so so yeah so it's fast growing I think it's number one in social mm -hmm. media and top yeah so it, but a few days ago it was number seven so I think what's happened is because of what's happening with TikTok the impending possible ban people have been looking for an alternative and Clapper seems like the TikTok alternative what I will say is is that whilst there are similarities to Clapper it is a different platform they made it very clear in their town hall that it is a short form video content platform but also live stream 
for adults. So there's going to be a different spin on things. I think that definitely people should look at clappers as an option to share their content, but don't go into it expecting it to be a TikTok dupe because it's not. So take it for what it is, take the opportunity, learn the platform, share your message. And I think it is going to be an alternative. I wouldn't say necessarily contender, but it'll be an alternative for people. They've got a lot of work to do because it's still quite new. So a lot of people are creating content in, for example, editing in CapCut and bringing it over because it's very, very primitive in terms of its function at the moment. But it's definitely worthwhile exploring it and, yeah, and finding new people to connect with. Mm, interesting. Mm. And interesting that you say about the verification levels. This sounds yes. kind yes. of cool. And yes. really verified, not just a paid verification no. like on some other platforms, no. which no. by the sounds of it. And I do I do like the, the adult spin on it. And we mean adult yes. as in for grown-ups, not, yes. you know, sexy time content but it is it's great then I think a good opportunity for businesses and people wanting to learn and wanting that educational content so it's kind of that side of TikTok by the sounds of it it's kind of where it's yeah where it's heading I can't wait to see more creators get on there yeah and see how it evolves because I was a reasonably early adopter to TikTok and it you know, that's way different to what it used to be. Yeah, so it'll be really interesting to see. And who knows, you know, maybe if the worst happens and TikTok is banned in the US, you know, maybe some TikTok employees can head on over to Clapper and and help them out, you know. They won't have much to do otherwise, (laughs) you know. So there's all sorts of interesting opportunities there. Well, Janine, thank you so much for joining us. This has been quite an eye-opener for live. I I have to admit, I've had a bit of stage fright going live, but I think I'm going to have to give it a twirl. Please, I want to see you live. I'll be there clapping like a proud (laughs) mama. Go! Go! Yes, Yes. it's been absolutely amazing chatting with you. Thank you so much for even considering me and having me. I've really enjoyed my time with you today. Oh, thank now, you. we know that you like to hang out on Instagram. So if people want to find you, what is your Instagram handle for them to connect with you? Yes, absolutely. It's video for bosses. And that's me across social media. So if you want to find Perfect. me on Facebook, Instagram, the old tickety talk, as I call it, video for bosses. Excellent. So, of course, we'll link to all of your socials in the show notes. And Janine also has a live video toolkit. So if today's discussion has inspired you to give it a red hot go, as they say here in Australia, you can get your hands on that. It's only $7. Well worth the investment. And again, we'll link to that in the show notes so you can head on over and grab your copy. But amazing. Thank you so much for joining us. It's been an absolute pleasure. And yes, I'm going to be thinking of you on Monday when I go live. So... (laughs) (laughs) and implementing all of your incredible tips. Amazing. Thank you.